the Tribit Stormbox Micro. I got this for free after asking Tribit if I could have a sample for review, and they sent it to me. And I'm going to compare it against what everyone else talks about when they talk about the Tribit Stormbox Micro. The Bose Soundlink Micro. Now, they do look pretty similar. However, the Bose came out in 2017. This has just come out March 2020. But have a look at them. It's almost as though Tribit said, mm, let's take aim at the Bose Micro and see if we can give incredible value like we've already done with our other speakers, most notably the Max Sound Plus, one of the best value speakers you can get for very cheap money. Now, a quick look at the comparisons between them. Depending on the deal, depending on the day, the Tribit is going to be half the price. Now, I got this one for 70 quid. Can Most people seem to be paying a bit more than that, but I did get lucky. Um, they've normally been around 90 quid. Got that 70 quid. I'm looking at Amazon this morning. The Tribit Stormbox Micro is retailing for 40 pounds. So more or less, it's half of the price. Is it half the fun? Is it half the speaker? Well, not in terms of the size. It's pretty much identical. In terms of actual weights, 289 grams for the Bose Micro, 290 grams for the Tribit. Basically, they are identical. The Bose is actually a bit more curved, whereas this one's a bit more square, but basically they are the same size, the same weight. But you could make an argument for the Bose Micro being slightly smaller. Uh, well, it would appear that way because it's got the curvy edges. I mean, there are curvy edges on the Tribit, but not quite to the extent, as you can see, out of the Bose Micro. Now they are pretty similar, uh, other than, at the moment, this is only coming up in black, and you can get pretty fluorescent colors such as this orangey uh, in your face color. So what, how else are they similar? They're similar in, they both have, believe it or not, two passive radiators. They're only little passive radiators. One fires up, one fires down. They both have the same configuration and they both have a main woofer driver. I don't know the size in the Trivet. I do know, well, I've read that it's 40 millimeters in the Bose and they both have a multi-function button on the front, which sits in between your volume up and your volume down button. One thing the Bose does that the Tribit doesn't, if I turn on the Tribit, you'll hear its welcome sound. It's a pretty little tune, but if I turn on the Bose. Battery 80%, connected to Galaxy S10. It wants to have a real chat with you. We turn them over, they both have an area for the passive radiator to uh, make itself known. They both have uh, these elastic bands on the back on which you can attach it, I suppose, most notably to your uh, bicycle or but any other, in, so anything else that would uh, make, make its way in there. So even my fingers, and they both have that <laughs> as an identical feature. It's even black as well on the Bose Micro. Now we do have USB-C uh, charging on the Tribit and we have USB micro on the Bose. Now on the back along with that charging port we have the connected and battery indicator. So you turn it on battery 80%. and I'm getting connected battery indicator lights S10. there and I'm getting an on indicator there and then we've got the Bluetooth button there. On the Tribit I have again it's flashing blue, if I turn that it's easier to see, if it's flashing blue because I'm not actually connected to my phone at the moment. And I have my power light and my Bluetooth light, Bluetooth light there. It's Bluetooth 4.2 on the Bose. It's Bluetooth 5 on the newer Tribit. And it's, so they are pretty much identical in everything except for price. Well, I say everything, of course, battery, 3.6 volts, 2,950 milliamp hours. On the Bose, the Tribit 3.7 volts, 2,600 milliamp hours. They both are SBC basic codec. They both do wireless pairing. They both will work as a phone speaker. I know that it's nine watts uh, power rated on the Tribit. I don't know. They don't publish the specs for Bose. I see people claiming uh, various powers for that, but I'm nothing that I would take as authority. They are both IPX7, drop in one meter of water, 30 minutes. Now, latency, I did find the Bluetooth better. So my average latency and YouTube 
YouTube latency was 75 milliseconds, but average 175 milliseconds and YouTube 150 milliseconds. So in terms of latency, for me personally, the Bose was doing better. Battery life, I did only get one hour, 10 minutes out of the Tribit, even though it's, it's almost similar batteries. Over three hours I got for the same test on the Bose, and then I got five hours, just over five hours, 66% volume, and coming up to four hours, 66% volume on the Tribit. So better on the 66% test, maybe it was overheating, or voltage sag uh, on my one hour test, but I did that twice, and it basically it's gonna be around an hour or just over at maximum, which is, for me, I was surprised. I thought I would get a couple of hours reading what other people are saying, but I personally, did not. I would say another issue what better with this is that if I want to change volume, it's only sticking if I'm actually playing music. If I stop playing the music and then I'll oh, turn up a little bit and then start playing, it goes back to the previous volume. So the vo volume is only sticking uh, if actual music is playing on my on my particular sample. If music is actually playing. Now in terms of how are they sounding, I did do frequency measurements. These are my frequency response measurements. So the trivet on axis. That's on its edge, woofer facing you, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. So we can see 40%, 60%, some bass adjustment for the low volume, but that adjustment is upper bass. So peak from around 220 to about 150 hertz, but then a roll off, even at low volume, and a bit of a peak, 9,500 kilohertz. Bass roll off at maximum volume, it's more in the upper bass, seems to be holding on to the lower bass that it did have. Looking at off axis, 45 degrees, how you will probably listen to it, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. a little bit. The thing for me to notice here is obviously when you're listening off axis, you're gonna lose substantial amount of mids and highs. That 9,000 kilohertz peak is not there. We have a six kilohertz peak. So a little bit smoother, a little bit flatter than if you were listening on axis where the nine kilohertz peak would be far more substantial. The Bose on axis, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. Zoom out, much bigger rounded bass peaks now at three kilohertz, but big suck out in the mids because we have a big rounded bass that still sounds quite warm. Already by 80% of flattening out of the bass and by 100%, Substantial roll off overlay off axis 40, 60, 80 max. Zoom in now. You can see off axis your probable listening position. Substantial roll off in the highs, flattening out of the mids 80 and below. We've still got substantial bass, so looking quite warm. The lack of the high end when listening off axis, complete lack of mids on axis now flattens out, replaced by a lack of high end and substantial roll off at maximum volume. So as you expect, it's gonna be very different if you're listening on axis. And I can, I can say, if you're very careful, you can place both of these on their edge. <laughs> well, uh, you, you can if you get it, look, the trivet is now standing on its own. And if you get it just right, it will stand. Although it's not doing it now, I can assure you, it did do it before, and at the end of the day, I can just do that. So on axis, on these speakers, they do seem to be tuned a little bit for off axis as you would expect. But of course, I would imagine if you're using it on the go, when you're using these straps, it's more likely to be on axis. If you've got it basically fixed to something, I would imagine you're more likely to be pointing towards you. Uh, but they're gonna sound very different, uh, however you orientate it. However, f for me uh, as an indoor user, I'm gonna do these recordings 45 degrees. I think that's how you, for most people, how you are going to listen to it. Just bear in mind that if you do listen face on, it's gonna sound more high end. Uh, you're gonna get more of more of a high end, which is obviously the directional part of the frequency, but the bass will be very similar. So get right to it. I'm gonna, I want to play 40% on me Bose. Well, that corresponds for me about 29% on the Tribit. So matching volumes, then normalizing to get uh, as, far, as near as I can to uh, same perceived loudness. This is what I got. Oh, who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time I 
percent volume these are low volumes the bose the trivet you can immediately see the bose has significantly more in the lower bass and the mid bass but the trivet does have an upper bass peak from around 200 hertz to around 500 hertz so upper bass lower mids significant difference in their tuning at lower volumes the trivet i could play at 29 percent and the bose at 40 percent for about which equates to about the same volume and then they are normalized to get me just right in terms of luffs. The amount of bass at these volumes for the Bose compared to more upper bass and more lower mids for the trivet adds up to a clearer sound for the trivet, but a warmer sound for the Bose. So you pay your money, it takes your choice, warm or clearer. There is a big difference in the tuning. I will say also when you're playing my 40% volume test back, do bear in mind, these are low volumes. I do try and repeat but my vo low volume test is low volume. And if you play it with your volume maxed out, it's not going to be representative of what you're going to hear because they do have bass compensation. And as you turn the volume up, that's going to sound overblown. But at normal volume levels, that's going to sound, oh, well, that's quite nice. I will also, so what they are low volumes in the real world. And if you wanted to try and match the real world volumes, it's averaging around 40 dB if you've got a sound pressure level meter for max. So not peak, but for max, about an average of 40 dB. It's gonna hover around in terms of where that needle is pointing. If you wanna match up at one meter, you wanna match up that record, my low volume recording with uh, how you're playing it on your speaker to get an idea of how clear or not are they at low volume. And clearly the Bose is very bass heavy. So it does sound quite muddy at low volumes maybe it's a little bit too much uh, bass compensation but you would describe that as a really warm sound whereas by comparison the trivet is clearer it's thinner it's noticeably bass light uh, in comparison but in terms of being able to latch onto vocals uh, at low volumes the trivet is doing a better job simply because it's thinner and it's clearer vocals are quite soft on the bose it's a warm sound so the, i'm not gonna say one is better than the other <laughs> i'll get to that in the end but they have very different tuning so although i started by saying oh i think they've taken tribute to take an aim at the bose not in terms of tuning um just show you let's have a listen at 69 percent, and in this case they will both be at 69 percent
99% for both of them. They play about the same volume at this level. In terms of the big difference at low volumes for the Bose in its low mids and its mid bass, well, it's not quite the same now. The Bose, the Tribit, is much closer. The Tribit still has its 200 hertz to 500 hertz boost, low bass, upper, mid, upper bass, lower mids. Now, bass peak, minus 25.3, minus 21.9. The Bose has the bigger mid bass. But lower bass, 60 hertz, minus 41, minus 38, 3D be up for the Tribit. So the Tribit tuned with a bigger lower bass and an upper bass kick. The Bose with a warmer sound with a mid bass push. The Tribit also has a 6 kilohertz boost, which is going to help with some of that clarity. 6 kilohertz is here, and there's a peak there for the Tribit, missing on the Bose where you have a roll off at the high end. So the difference is between them in some ways on, are closer now, but the sound signature um, is coming through, isn't it? This Bose Micro is a warm sounding speaker, micro speaker. The vocals are certainly there, but they're a little bit recessed, they're a little bit soft in comparison to the Tribit, which is quite hard edged, but the vocals have far more clarity. But again, in an AB comparison, sounds a bit bass light, but it's not really. It's just that the tuning is quite different. This is mid bass oriented, whereas this has a peak in the lower bass and the upper bass. But what comes through as a warm sound is the mid bass, which is tuned much more prominently than Tribit, who've chosen, it appears, to go for upper and lower bass and ease back a bit on the mid bass. So a bit louder now. Real world volumes where, according to my frequency response, let's see if it happens, the Bose is going to be start already uh, reducing its bass. So let's see if it's a bit closer now in terms of bass. 80%. Well, I'm calling it my 80%, uh, but I'm, I'm matching them to around 80%. Uh, it's going to be a bit louder on the tribute, but then normalized. Comparison. I'm the girl that they don't talk about. Quiet with a big mouth. Listen for the doubt, then call it. Make you out for what you say to me. Look at every single need. If you got what I need, then oh, I'll take you on like a big deal. Eggs you can unfill. Keep Eighty-three percent for the Bose, eighty-nine percent for the Tribit to get them about the same volume. The sound signatures are now pretty much nailed. The Bose with a big mid bass minus nineteen at hundred hertz, minus twenty-three for the Tribit, four dB down for mid bass, but upper bass minus nineteen at two hundred plays minus twenty-one. So the Tribit two dB up for upper bass, and then low bass minus thirty-six against minus forty-nine, thirteen decibels up for the Tribit. What are we talking about? This fifty to sixty hertz region here can see significantly fatter and fuller on the Tribit compared to the Bose. Looking at the 6 kilohertz region, just where there's a dip on the Bose, there's a peak for the Tribit, helping it in the clarity stakes. So that 200 hertz boost, well, 200 to 500 hertz boost you get on the Tribit, it's, you know, it does appear to be tuned like that, uh, which is quite a difference quite a bit of a difference between the tuning. So the upper that you're getting that upper bass line that's coming through, you can hear that pumping uh, of the upper bass, whereas this is a bit warm and it's a bit mushy by comparison because we're talking mid bass. And the root, whereas that has a bit of a slam, that has a bit of a, mu a mush, but it's rounded, it's fuller sounding. And vocals are, do, are coming out as more defined, uh, having more of an edge to them. And they're quite soft on the Bose, however. I do think they both do a really good job. And I think you've got a choice depending on what kind of music. 
probably more middle of the road. Uh, if you have, if you listen to a varied amount of uh, music, you may think a warmer sound uh, is is right up your street. Not least because it's going to tame harsh recordings. But on the Dribbit, if you like, uh, I don't know, heavy rock, something that wants to go lean and fast, definitely the Dribbit comes into play there. But there is a big difference in the sound signatures. But I, I do think they both do. A really good. I've not really listened to micros speakers till now. Never really suited. I am listening to more speakers now. Speakers that previously I would not have listened to. Don't really fit in with uh, my lifestyle previously. I, I have been surprised by these two speakers. That they are having come from a two hundred pound uh, B and O A one second gen, which was a huge disappointment. As nice as the sound may have been it was underwhelming from day one whereas i would say these are i wish i still had the, the boast to do an, uh, an ab with them but i sent them both back but i've been more overwhelmed from day one with both of these speakers whereas the 200 pound uh, a1 uh it never had an excitement these can both sound exciting i, I enjoy listening to both of them even though i would describe as ab this is a little bit muddy and a bit a little bit soft that's not to say the speaker is, oh, oh, it's too soft, it's too muddy. I'm saying in comparison, because the tuning is very, very different. Thin, defined, woolly, mushy, warm. I personally quite like a warm sound. So very much uh, it's going to be what your tastes are. Bear in mind, 40 quid, 70 quid plus. Now, obviously, how loud do they go? I don't know what the watts are on the Bose. So I'm not quite sure which one is going to be louder. It's been a while, it's been a while Maximum volume, the Bose ultimately is the louder speaker. Peak 85.5, 86, half a dB up on my measurements at one meter. Laughs minus 12.6, minus 13.9 means the Bose 1.3 dB up in laughs. RMS minus 15.5, minus 16.6 means the Bose 1.1 dB louder in terms of RMS. Now, even though the Bose goes louder, 200 hertz where we know the Tribit has a 200 to 500 hertz boost, it's still louder. Minus 20.5, minus 21 means you still got more, even though it's not as loud, you've got more upper bass kick for the tribit than mid bass. 84, 70, minus 30, minus 36, significantly louder for the Bose. Minus 24, minus 39, so up to 6 dB louder for the Bose in mid bass. But then again, deep bass, 60, minus 41, minus 38.5. The tribit is still holding on to its lead in terms of how deep it goes. Minus 38.5 is. 2.5 dB louder than the Bose. You also still have the 6 kilohertz boost for the Tribit, which is helping the clarity stakes, which again is missing on... You still have that 6 ki kilohertz boost on the Tribit, missing on the Bose, where it has a dip. So the sig sound signatures in some ways are opposites. You're going to prefer one or the other. The Bose is a warm sounding speaker. It goes a little bit louder. The Tribit, a bit thinner, a bit clearer, more upper bass, but holding on to lower bass as well. So the Bose... Bose is definitely louder. That's not in question here. However, it is a little bit harsh at its absolute maximum. You've only got to pull it down 
a, a one notch and it's noticeably smoother. However, when you put, put them both to maximum, that is a little bit harsh, whereas the trivet still sounds together. It, it's never really losing what it's doing. And surprisingly, although compared in a quick AB, the trivet sounds thinner in the bass, it actually has more lower bass. It's that rounded full mid bass that's giving it that warm nature, making it sound like it's got a fuller bass. We're actually got a bigger upper bass, lower bass on the trivet. It's quite holding on. Look, remember, we're only talking about little speakers and little passive radiators. I'm not saying it's going to shake your walls down, but I'm saying in terms of what you may expect, if you've never heard of a speaker that size, do a decent job. Uh, in the bass department and that does hold on to some bass not going to hear too much of that low bass a because it's a little speaker to start with and b because uh, it's quite low in comparison to the rest of the track however it, it's definitely there and you can definitely measure it and it's there's more of it than you've got in the bass so i would sum this up by saying these are both nice speakers uh you, you could have both be happy with both suit different genres of music I would expect you to know that a warm sound uh, will gel well with, you know, if you've got very thin and harsh tracks, it's going to cover a lot of that with its warmth, whereas you're going to want a decent recording with something that's, you know, you could describe it as quite revealing. I'm not saying it's a flat frequency response by any, any uh, measure, but the thin, uncoloured, you could say, nature of it, although it is lacking a bit in the mid Bass. If you're going to make any criticism, you'd say maybe we could uh, have a bit more mid bass and a little bit less of the upper bass. It may be that you'd have to say there's no doubt that this is a better speaker than the Bose. It's no doubt it's better value uh, because it's nearly half the price. But they both sound different. I've seen other people saying, uh, you know, they're describing one or the other as better. They are so different. I don't think you. Can, they both do a good job, and I think you would enjoy either one of them as, as I as I have now <laughs> not owning speakers really do such a good job at that size before I don't think you, you should or could say one is better than the other I think you could say the tribute is better value that's not in doubt but just know what you listen to and what your personal taste and sound signature is they're not flat frequency response they are not hi-fi <laughs> in that sense or by any sense so it's not a case of it's flat and I know exactly now how it's going to sound with all music they're going to be they're going to sound different uh, and they both have their own way of doing things that's my first comparison and um, if there's any interest i will probably do uh, more comparisons down the line i've got the mini rig mini which obviously uh, has got at least twice the power I, will, I would imagine i think i said one was nine watts well, so nine watts i know for sure for the trivet so all that went louder i don't know 10 watts i've seen people say seven watts but 15 watts on mini, mini rig mini. And I, I do think that's the clue. I do think the mini rig is a mini, whereas these are proper micro speakers. So I'm not sure that's a fair comparison, but uh, if there's any interest, I will certainly do that. I hope you've got something out of my video as usual, and I thank you for watching.